Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and in this video I'm going to show you folks how I use this cheap $98 skill drill press to work as a flat lap, but also how to use lapidary resin wheels or hard wheels and an expandable drum. So what I use to attach the flat lap to the drill press are these partially threaded bolts and I actually chop off this end of the bolt. I use an angle grinder because I have like three or four cheap Harbor Freight angle grinders laying around the house but if you don't have an angle grinder you can use maybe some kind of hacksaw or some other kind of saw that can cut metal. I know some bandsaw blades can cut metal but if you do make sure to be safe. And then I deburr the side that I cut off just to keep you from getting cut from your own creation. And this is actually the part that is going to go inside of the drill press. When I first attempted to make this video, I was using a full threaded bolt until one of my very good friends, Steve, suggested the partially threaded bolts since the non-threaded side will go into the chuck of the drill press better and it might spin even truer. Then I use a nut. I was using the slightly larger nuts, now I'm using the slightly smaller nuts. I put on a washer. Make sure the bolt fits your flat lap, in this case it is a half inch. Sometimes different flat laps have wider holes and you would use a bigger bolt. I'm using the half inch because that's one of the more traditional sized holes for a flat lap and my cheap drill press only opens up to a half inch. And then I put it on there like this. I put another washer down. Then I use one of these locking nuts. It has like some kind of piece of nylon in there. I'm sorry, I don't know the like proper name for those. I tighten that down, then I tighten this side down. You are going to want to use two pairs of pliers to properly tighten this. If you don't, it could go spinning. Get it pretty tight, doesn't have to be impossibly tight. Now you're ready to put this inside of the chuck of your drill press and pretty much you're almost set to go. Real quick I want to mention, some people suggest using a backing plate even for these harder discs because when you tighten this up it could warp the hard diamond lap. I have a friend named Michael who was cutting out affordable master laps to go on the back of these laps to support him. He was using his drill press and a hole cutter to cut out plastic cutting boards that he got from Walmart, I believe. And he drilled a hole, put them on the back, and he was good to go. Keeps it from warping. But also, if you plan on polishing with your flat lap and using some kind of diamond or silicon carbide pad, you're gonna want some kind of backing. And also, if you plan on putting some kind of cushion between your sanding pad and your master lap so that you can easily cab where the pad will allow you to get into the contours of the stone, then you're going to need a master lap too. To use a wheel, I put in a spacer the size of the bolt I plan on using for my half inch bolt. I'm using a few spacers that make it a half inch hole. For my half inch bolt, I'm using a few different spacers that came with other wheels to bring it down to a half inch. I stick it through just like I would the flat lap. I have a washer on the back and a nut on the back. Put down a washer. And then, like the other one, I put down a locking nut. And tighten it up. 
you use two pairs of pliers and you're good to go. You could chuck this into your drill press, put your drill press sideways, figure out some kind of watering system, and yeah, you're good to go using lapidary wheels on your drill press. All right, so before we just chuck up the flat lap piece and we get a move on with all this, I wanted to mention that drill presses spin at different speeds. This particular drill press doesn't really spin at a traditional lapidary machine speed. This machine is offering me 570, 900, 1390, 2050, and 3550 RPMs. Most lapidary machines spin at 1750 or very close to there. Different drill presses offer different speeds. This one is either too fast or too slow. For me, I would rather have a little bit faster than a little bit slower, especially for like grinding, shaping, and pre-polishing. But when it comes to polishing, especially with compounds like cerium oxide, you're gonna want it slow. Maybe even as slow as 570. Uh, maybe 900, but 570 might be better. Just a little food for thought. This is set to 2,050 RPM. All right, so now I'm ready to chuck this up. Just put it in there, make sure it's nice and straight, and get it on there pretty tight. And she's good. I have seen some people put the flat lap disc um, on the other side, remove their table here, and then actually put the drill press upside down, which is pretty cool. You can uh, get a little bit more room, it's a little bit more comfy, or you know, whatever reason why they do that. I'm going to do it this way because it's kind of the easiest way for me in my particular shop setting right now, which is a mess. For my water collection, I am using just a little piece of plastic. You're going to want to make sure that the shaft of the flat lap is just far enough down to where the splash isn't going over whatever kind of container you're going to do for collection. I would rather use some kind of rounded collection, such as like this big pot or whatever. I could hold a lot more and uh, I don't have to worry about hitting this while I'm working. But my table actually doesn't come off of my drill press very easily. So I'm not gonna do that. There are many different ways you can go about watering your machine. I've seen some people simply like dip the stone and work it like that. That's totally fine if that's for you. But I prefer to use like a drip system. I'm going to be using a two and a half gallon drinking water container. If you have one of these lying around, you can have this drip onto your flat lap by placing it next to it somehow. I have this little tube here at the end of my watering system and I actually tape it to my drill press so that the water drips down nice and easy. You're gonna want the water to hit closest to the center so the water splashes outwards. If you have it dripping anywhere but the center, you're gonna get some chalky dry spots. Dry spots will heat up your diamond, which will make the diamond pop off and ruin your discs, sanding pads or wheels faster. I'm just gonna use some duct tape. There's gotta be a better way to secure your watering system uh, than this, but whatever. All right, and after you have all that together, pretty much good to go. I do suggest, if you're gonna do more than just making things flat, to dop your stones. I'm using a, a nail that I ground off the tip and some super glue to secure it to this small piece of labradorite. This will really help you get good angles in order to cab your piece.
All right. <laughs> That's that. It totally works. I could have made this prettier, but I was trying to hold it at an angle that you folks could see. Yeah, I could hop on over to 220, or I could slap on a master lap with a foam backing and start cabbing using some sandpaper or like a cloth backed silicon carbide sanding disc or diamond disc. So that's the flat lap. So now let's chat about lapidary wheels. All right, folks. So when it comes to lapidary wheels, such as this diamond resin bonded wheel or these diamond hard wheels, it's a little bit more tricky because they tend to stick out a little bit. And these regular partially threaded bolts do not go all the way to the other side. This is the longest partially threaded bolt they had at my local hardware store. And I don't know of any partially threaded bolts that are threaded a little bit more than this, but I'm sure they exist. I haven't found them online and honestly I haven't even looked. But to use a hard diamond wheel or a resin bonded soft wheel, you're going to need something that has more thread and preferably have a partially non-threaded side so that you can get everything in there. You use the washers, two nuts, just like before, chop off the end, stick it into the drill press, put the drill press sideways. Since I don't have the tools to show you that this works and I can only explain it, I will just go ahead and show you how the expandable wheel works. Since expandable wheels are a lot thinner on the sides than diamond resin and diamond hard wheel. All right, so for the expandable, we're gonna work in a similar way to the flat lap. We're gonna have a bolt with a washer on there. We're gonna feed the bolt through the expandable drum. You might need some spacers like I have here to fit whatever size bolt you are using. I like to bring the threads up to where the locking nut can fully lock onto the bolt. Put another washer. Lock it up all the way. Then we tighten it again with two pairs of pliers. Nice and tight, and we're good to go. All right, now it's time to chuck it up. Make sure you're putting the bolt into the expandable drum in a way to where it'll expand when it spins. If you didn't know, expandable drums are not designed to spin both ways or it will not expand and hold the belts that you want it to while it's spinning. Gonna chuck it up. Nice and tight. Now watch the drum, you will see it expand. That's the expansion that holds the belt into the drum. All right, so obviously it's really hard to use <laughs> sideways. So we're gonna want to put the drill press sideways. Um, some people have different methods of doing this. Since I can't take my table off and I can't like clamp this to where like the motor would be hanging off the side of a table or whatever, I'm just going to put it sideways so you get a rough idea of how this is going to work. All right, so the drill press is sideways. It's not straight. But I want you to do better than me. This is just to give you the idea. We're gonna put our belt on. After the belt is on, it's time for our watering system. You're gonna to wanna to create some kind of hood to keep this wheel from creating a huge mess. 
They do sell these hoods. I believe they're manufactured by Lortone. I think they sell them at Kingsley North, or you can find them online. You could use something else that's similar to a hood. This is some kind of light for like a buffer that I got from my dentist. You could cut a bucket in half. You could use a tire that goes over the top like they do overseas in Asia a lot. But yeah, you're gonna want something to keep whatever kind of water you're using from making a huge mess. And you're also gonna want a watering system. Again, you can use the two and a half gallon drinking water container with or without the tube. And you're good to go. You're ready to start cabbing on a drill press. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna skip making the hood, which is gonna make a huge mess in my shop, but this is something you are gonna to wanna to make or buy or figure out because uh, yeah, it'll also keep pieces from flying off at you if you plan on using rougher grits and uh, keep the water out of your face, keep the water mist out of your lungs. But just to show you folks, I got water going on the wheel and we got a spinning wheel. It looks like a cabochon, not a very pretty one, but definitely worked. It's sanding out all the rough spots from the hard wheel. And we did it all with a drill press, a bolt, two washers, and two nuts that cost like three bucks. Anyway, I hope some of you folks find this enjoyable, entertaining, or helpful. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. I could have made it better, but this is like the fourth attempt. And I think you folks get the idea. Again, you can use hard diamond and resin lapidary wheels. If you want, you're just gonna have to figure out a longer threaded bolt. Some of you might have noticed this is a little shaky. That's because I've had this machine fall on this wheel while trying to make this video three or four times, and it's a little bit bent. So just take care of your bolt or maybe buy a few of them. Anyway, let me know if I didn't explain something good enough for you folks. Uh, yeah, leave in the comments section anything else you might want to know. You can get expendable drums like this from eBay. You can get flat lap discs from companies such as Johnson Brothers. And again, don't stop here. Um, with my ideas, take a look on Facebook on groups such as DIY Lapidary and uh, a few other Lapidary groups where other people are making drill press Lapidary machines. My machine is definitely not the best example of a drill press Lapidary machine in any way, but I just wanted to show you that it can be done very affordably. There are some people that use adapters that lets you switch out your wheels and discs a lot faster than I can by taking the chuck off and using bolts. Um, my friend Michael is using some kind of adapter that lets him use angle grinder um, discs. And there's other people out there with great ideas, so just keep looking. This is just to get you folks started on the idea of drill press lapidary. If I would have known this when I was a kid, desperate for lapidary, I would have done this years and years and years ago, and it might have saved me thousands of dollars. One more thing worth mentioning before I wrap up this video is that there's no reason why you can't use a trim saw blade for sawing on here. Build some kind of table, have some kind of oil or watering system, and easily make a lapidary saw. I wouldn't be surprised if the sawing works better than the lapping because you can adjust the speed. 
Again, let me know if you need any more help. I'm always here for you. And also check out my Etsy, Taos Gemcraft on Etsy. I sell a lot of goods that me and my friend Kayla make. It helps us to get to gem shows around the United States, helps us to buy more products to make videos for you folks. And yeah, it really helps. Check it out. Until next time, my friends, I love you. See you soon.